boyfriend is moving in with his girl best friend and I don't trust her one bit. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It's sending me on Instagram. My boyfriend and I have been together for almost a year. When I met him, he already had a very big group of best friends. One of them was this girl. There's actually another girl in the group, but my boyfriend and this particular girl, let's call her Lacey. Lacey is completely obsessed with my boyfriend. I tell him all the time, but he doesn't want to listen to me. She goes out of her way to spend time with him and she'll do girlfriend things for him. Sometimes she'll call him and say, I cooked us dinner, come over to my apartment. She even goes to his apartment and helps him do laundry. Let me go back though. When we started dating, he asked me not to be uncomfortable and that him and her were only good friends. But as soon as I saw them with each other, it was visible that she was in love with him. When he first brought me around to meet his friends, she was super territorial. She would sit next to him and even sat on his lap in front of me. And this made my boyfriend uncomfortable. He asked her to sit on a chair instead of his lap. After that, I asked him if he had feelings for her and he said no. He said he's only ever seen her as a sister. That the thought of hooking up with her makes him want to vomit. Lacey reached out to me and asked me to have lunch with her. Throughout the whole lunch, all she talked about was my boyfriend. And how amazing he is. And how only a good girl deserves him. Part 2 is up. My boyfriend is moving in with his girl best friend and I don't trust her. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. When her and I went to lunch, all she talked about was my boyfriend. That's when she started saying things like, he only deserves a really good girl. That's when I was straight up with her. I told her that he had already chosen me because he loved me and that I didn't need her to tell me what my boyfriend needed. You guys should have seen the look on this girl's face. She was shocked that I would defend myself and even talk back to her. Then she said, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to make you feel bad. I told her that I didn't feel bad and that I knew what she was doing. She was basically trying to intimidate me and make me feel that I wasn't good enough for my boyfriend. She denied it and started apologizing, but at least I made it clear to her that I was not stupid and that she was not going to walk all over me like she probably did with all of his exes. By the way, one of his past girlfriends actually broke up with her because of this girl. I mean, Lacey. Found this out through one of the other friends. They told me that I needed to be careful with her. And that's why I was prepared to go to lunch with her. Guess what happened though? I called my boyfriend to say hi to him and that's when he starts yelling at me. He said Lacey called him to tell him that I had attacked her at lunch. That I basically threatened her? I explained to him what happened from my point of view and he said that she was probably just overreacting but it was her word against mine part three is up my boyfriend is moving in with his girl best friend and I do not trust her. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It's sending me on Instagram. After Lacey told my boyfriend that I had attacked her and threatened her, he told me to keep my distance. So I did. But that meant that he would hang out with her without me. I found this completely unacceptable. That's when I told my boyfriend that she was manipulative, that she had clearly planned everything out so that he and her could be alone. Then I told him that his ex-girlfriend left him because of her. He told me that I didn't know the full story and that I should mind my own business. That's when I noticed that he wouldn't come over to my apartment every day. And guess why? His best friend Lacey told him that she had a stalker and that she needed my boyfriend to stay over her house so that she could feel protected and safe. I just can't. I told him that she was clearly manipulating him and probably lying about the stalker situation so that he could spend more time with her. And just like that, two days later, he told me that they were moving in together and that she miraculously found an apartment big enough for the two of them. In two days? I don't think so. I think she had been planning this the whole time and my boyfriend is just stupid enough to fall for it. I told him if he moved in with her that he should just forget about me. He begged me not to leave him so I guess I'm still his girlfriend. He still did debating whether or not to move in with her. He says he doesn't want to lose me, but he wants to be able to be there for her. I think I should break up with him, but maybe there's another solution. What do you guys think I should do? husband refused to touch me on our wedding night and says that it's my fault. Our wedding was only two weeks ago and to this day he still has not touched me. Here's the thing, we had an arranged marriage. My family is extremely traditional and where we come from it's normal to have arranged marriages. When I was 12 years old my parents told me who I was going to end up marrying. This all seemed very normal to me growing up because I saw my sisters and cousins doing it. But now that I'm in this I realize how terrible it is. My now husband didn't actually grow up in the same country I did. In fact we had only met a week before the actual wedding. I had a really bad feeling a month before the wedding though. So I told my parents I did not want to marry him. That's when they told me that if I didn't go through with the marriage, they would disown me. I would have nowhere to live, no money, and no family. So, of course, I agreed to marry him. A week before the wedding, my parents hosted a dinner for his family and mine. When he came in through the door, I was happy to see that he was actually attractive, but he didn't look at me once throughout the whole night. Part two is up. My new husband refused to touch me on our wedding night and says it's all my fault. We finally met a week before the wedding. When he came in through the door, I was so happy to see that he was actually attractive. But this man barely looked at me the entire night. Parents presented us to each other and he glanced at me. That was it. He was extremely cold and basically didn't speak to any member of my family. The only person he did speak to was my father, of course. I spent the entire dinner trying to make eye contact with him, but not once did it happen. Thankfully, the dinner only lasted about two hours and his parents and him left. As soon as they did, I burst into tears. 
Also, I know I'm a beautiful girl. I've had many suitors come to my house and ask my parents for my hand in marriage. They had agreed to this arranged marriage so long ago that it never even gave any other guys a chance. The worst part is that one of the guys that asked to marry me a few years ago, he and I went to the same school, got along, and dare I say liked each other? At least he would look me in the face. I told my parents that he didn't even look at me once. My dad said that I was completely overreacting, but my mother agreed with me, thank God. She told my dad that my fiance's behavior was completely unacceptable, and that the least he could have done was at least said hello to me. My mom was also upset that he didn't even say hello to her. And that he was openly disrespecting our family. I tried to convince my dad to cancel the marriage, but he said no. Part 3 is up. Husband refused to touch me on our wedding night and blamed it all on me. He refused to look at me on our wedding day. He didn't even kiss me once. The only time he touched me that night was when the photographer asked us to hold hands for a picture. And even then, the way he grabbed my hand was so cold. When it came time for us to go to our room, I was already very upset. He could tell. We got into the room and I went straight to the shower. I took off my dress, showered, and came out. And when I did, he pretended to be asleep. That's when I grabbed him and turned him around. I asked him why he wouldn't touch me or even look at me. That if he didn't want to marry me, he shouldn't have. That's when he told me that he never really wanted to marry me because he had heard things about me he said that we had some mutual friends but he refuses to tell me who these friends are he claims they told him that i had a secret boyfriend and that i had dated many many men which couldn't be further from the truth first off my parents are super strict the only time i was unchaperoned was in school and he said it's your fault i will never touch you i started to cry and i called my parents i literally ran away from him I told my parents what he said and thankfully they were on my side my father says the marriage is void if he refuses to have children with me but guess what I started doing some digging and I found out that he was the one seeing other women. And men, what should I do? Story time about how I found out my husband was seeing escorts while I was pregnant. Disclaimer is not my story time was sent me on Instagram. My husband and I have been married for six years. We had tried and tried for a baby and we had a really hard time. The first three years of our marriage was hell. We tried so much to get pregnant, but we just couldn't do it. We went to the doctor and that's when they told us that my husband had a little problem. So basically he was the reason why we weren't able to get pregnant easily. Because of this, I had to undergo a lot of treatments. I started taking all this different medication, which really mess with my hormones. For the first time in my life, I got acne, I started to gain weight, and I also started getting mood swings. Unfortunately, my husband for some reason thought this was a character flaw of mine, and that basically I should just be able to control my emotions. I took him to the doctor so that the doctor could explain to him what was happening to my body. Finally, the doctor told him that everything that was happening to me was because of the medicine that I was taking for us to have kids. My husband decided to apologize to me and wanted to take me on a trip. He took me to Hawaii for two weeks and it was beautiful. We ended up making up and it was the best time ever. A month later, we found out that I was pregnant. Pregnant. My husband was the happiest I'd ever seen him. Two weeks later, I started noticing weird things in our bank account. He started sending $5,000 to one person in particular every single month. Story time about how I found out my husband was seeing escorts while I was pregnant. Disclaimer is not my story time was sent me on Instagram. That's when I noticed that every single month he would send somebody $5,000. It had been happening for three months. Right away, I was suspicious. A few months back, he and I had watched a documentary about escorts. And during the documentary, he kept judging all the women and the men. You no, know, acting greater than thou. And as soon as I saw the payments on our bank account, it's like a light bulb went off in my head. He must have seen that documentary and been like, wow, I know I can do that. Of course he can. My husband is a 40 year old, good looking, wealthy man. So that's when I started investigating. I had full access to his laptop, which had all of his text messages as well as emails. And he never bothered to change his password on any of it. I waited for him to leave to the gym and that's when I got on his laptop. And I uncovered a whole ring of escorts. Not only was he sending money to one girl through our bank account, he was paying other girls through Bitcoin. As I was crying in front of the laptop, I had the presence of mind to start adding up all the money he had spent. In only three months, my husband managed to spend 50 $5,000. And from what I could gather, he had about five escorts. Keep in mind, he's doing all of this while I'm pregnant. So here's what I did. I managed to contact each girl and ask for the money back. And I basically threatened to expose them. One was a teacher. The other was a model, which I could contact her agency and accuse her. One was actually a stay-at-home mom who was married. Only one responded to my messages. Part three is up. Story time about how I found out my husband was seeing escorts while I was pregnant. Disclaimers that on my story time was sent me on Instagram. Finally, one of the escorts got back to me and she told me that she would give me all of the money back. My husband had given this girl $7,000 in the time span of two weeks. Then she spilled all the tea. She told me my husband had signed up to an escort website and that he had anywhere between 10 and 15 girls. So there were other ways he was paying them and I just didn't know about it. This is when I came to my senses. I told her she did not need to send the money back to him because it wasn't her fault. It was my husband's fault. Then this girl told me that my husband would talk bad about me to her and that they would meet up at fancy hotels and that's when he would tell her that I was a toxic wife and that all I cared about was money. By the way, I make my own money. I told her I was pregnant and she was mortified. I gathered up all the evidence and I confronted my husband. That's when he said, finally, I don't have to hide it anymore. He told me that he didn't really think I would care. Since when? I asked him to tell me the truth and tell me how many girls he was seeing and how much money he had spent. And he confessed that he had seen over 20 girls and probably spent over $100,000. Then he asked me for a divorce. 
divorce. I'm kind of glad he did because I was going to divorce him anyway. I am going to get his money and raise our child on our own. His family is trying to convince me otherwise though. What should I do? Am I wrong for not accepting my sister's relationship with my ex despite her having cancer as a teenager? My 25 female father married my stepsister's 23 female's mom when I was four and she was three. We've lived together for most of our lives in our family. She and I were extremely close. She developed cancer when she was 14 and was sick for about two years. During that time, my parents became understandably overprotective. They also asked a lot of me. I quit my extracurricular so that I could get a job, the money went towards her medical bills, and so I could drive her to appointments. I didn't go to dances, and any fun activities I did needed to include her. I did almost all of this willingly, the exception being having to quit my high school volleyball team. I did throw a bit of a tantrum about that, but was swiftly punished. And I think having one emotional breakdown was pretty chill given the circumstances. Anyhow, I go to college and meet my ex, we'll call him Ben, when I was a junior. We fall in love, blah blah blah. He and I move in together when we graduate, so we've been living together for about three years. We were serious until July when I walked into my bedroom and saw him sleeping with my sister. <gasps> I broke it off, tears were shed, he moved out, etc. My sister apologized at first but then backed off. I thought she was going to give me space but last week she called and asked if we could meet up. She told me that she and Ben were in love and were just telling me as a courtesy before they started posting photos online. You gave up your fucking volleyball career for her? Distraught. I left her in the restaurant by herself and did not pay my portion of the bill. She later Venmo me asking me for the money. Are you gonna see my man? The least you can do is pay for my food like common courtesy. She then told my parents who called me to their house, telling me how disappointed they are in me for not supporting my sister's relationship with Ben. They brought up the fact that because she had cancer as a teenager, she never learned proper social etiquette and has a hard time meeting people. Oh my God, no. I don't buy this, in part because I've seen her socialize just fine and since we spent a good chunk of the time she was sick together. That would mean that I should have had bad social skills as well by that logic. They then told me that if I don't accept my sister and Ben's relationship, they may have to go no contact with me. I reminded them that I'm also their daughter and they should understand my point of view, but they are adamant that this is about me being jealous of her. For the record, I am not jealous of her. I'm not upset that Ben picked her over me. I'm sad about the end of the relationship and do feel betrayed. But Lord knows that I don't want to be with a cheater. What I'm sad about is the fact that my sister chose Ben over me. That she slept with Ben knowing he and I were in a long-term committed relationship and continues to be with him knowing how much it hurts me. Now, no one in my immediate family is talking to me and I'm getting messages from my aunts, uncles, and cousins telling me that I'm an asshole and a selfish bitch. So, am I an asshole? How do I handle this as a mother? False accusations tore our family apart. I have been in a mother's worst nightmare for the last year. A year ago, almost exactly, my daughter accused my current partner of sexual assault. They incurred an investigation and charges laid. Court proceedings are happening just very slowly. However, her father kept me completely in the dark as to what the situation was. My daughter doesn't live with me. She lives full time with her father and apparently this happened when she was visiting me for the summer. I have been pursuing court action to be able to talk to my daughter, but it's a slow process. My ex is fighting tooth and nail to keep me from contacting her with his justification being that I'm still in a relationship with the person that allegedly assaulted her. But basically, through legal proceedings, we are finally able to get her side of the story and it is absolutely untrue. I can't go into detail but the set of circumstances laid out in her statement absolutely never happened. My take on it is that she saw a video on TikTok or YouTube about someone else's experience, saw all the attention and support they were getting, and decided to make up a story. Direct quote, My friend and I saw how sympathetic people were being and said, hey, let's get in on this. Unfortunately, her father saw whatever it was she was doing and immediately cut contact with me and went to the police. My ex has hated my current partner since the beginning, but I'm at a complete loss for what to do now. I'm the one that is going to have to testify that there is no way that situation happened while she is surrounded by people that believe her absolutely even though i know for a fact that it never happened how she said the idea of having to get up there and call her a liar is heartbreaking i feel like it is something that neither of us will recover from i'm coming to the point where i am soon going to have to actually talk to my daughter about it and have no idea how i'm going to address the fact that she blatantly lied and that it has completely destroyed our lives. My partner lost access to his own daughter since his charges prevent him any contact with anyone under 16. I haven't been able to talk to my daughter in a year. We've lost friends and family and are going to be out tens of thousands of dollars in legal fees before it's over. I love my daughter, but I'm also intensely angry at her for the horror and trauma we have gone through. I recognize that she might not understand the consequences of her decision and that her father would have been inclined to pursue this even if she tried to tell him it wasn't true. But I just can't disregard all the damage she has caused. And for the record, no, I'm not trying to cover for my partner. If I had any doubt about it actually being true, I would be in a very different place. I wouldn't be willing to testify if I thought there was any possible way it could be true. Oh my god, this makes me sad. Am I wrong for refusing to attend an apology dinner after my mother-in-law called me a bad mother at my son's funeral? I lost my son to congenital heart disease and he did not survive the open heart surgery at the age of one year and six months. He was the greatest blessing I had in my life. Everyone kept telling me things will get easier with time. I know that no matter how much time goes by, I'll still be missing my baby and everything sweet about him. Mother-in-law and I were in constant conflict. 
Things had always been bad between us, but in those months, we reached our limit. She kept getting involved in my son's treatment and criticized every decision I made, claiming I didn't know how to handle my son's illness. We went low contact, but she kept causing issues occasionally. My husband was torn between our son's illness and his mother's issues. When my son passed away, she came to the funeral and caused the scene by arguing with me, knowing I had no energy for it. She used the fact that everyone was there so she could say it was my fault my son was born sick and I didn't take care of him properly and that I didn't listen to her when suggested other ways to treat his condition and that I was the one who took their grandchild away from them and caused him heartache. She then loudly called me a bad mother. I had no idea how I kept my composure and kept standing on both feet. She then went to tell everyone I kicked her out as a way to hurt her feelings and lied that I convinced my husband to ban her from visiting her grandson's grave. My husband later sent his side of the family an email talking about my mother-in-law's behavior during and after our son's illness and telling them he will no longer be seeing her. That had the family criticizing us, saying mother-in-law was just trying to do what was best for her grandbaby and called us selfish for assuming we're the only ones struggling with this tragedy. We haven't seen his mom in one year and eight months. I'm now three months pregnant. No one knew, only my sister-in-law, but word got out. A week later, I had family members saying I was invited to a dinner hosted by my mother-in-law so she could both apologize in front of the whole family and settle this issue before the baby's born. They said mother-in-law was regretful and offered to financially provide for her grandbaby and they want to see that. I refuse, but my husband surprisingly wants me to go. I had his grandparents calling me, telling me that I'm a person with a good heart and forgiveness is something that I'm capable of giving. I told them I'll never be sitting at the same table with the person who called me a bad mother at my child's funeral. I still remember it vividly till this very day. My sister said this change of heart from mother-in-law is probably for the new baby. It could be, but I insisted I won't come. They're saying I'm making it hard for everyone to move on and pass this unresolved pain and should really go. So, should I? Am I wrong for asking my boyfriend to charge his family member for fraud? Backstory, I, 27 female, and my boyfriend, 34 male, have been together for five years and have worked really hard to save for a house. The house won't be built until the end of 2022. Last week, we received some shocking news when my boyfriend's credit score came back as being bad. There was activity on the statement that was 100% not his and a credit card that has gone into default over the last six months. This credit card was originally my boyfriend's, but he swears he closed the account and canceled the card in mid-2019. Long story short, we discovered that a family member that was living with him a few years ago had gotten a hold of the card at some point and has been using the card on and off since 2019. They defaulted on payments in early 2020, but paid this off, then defaulted again in December of last year, and the account is still in default with over 5,000 in old charges and late fees. The family member had diverted these to their address. My boyfriend had zero knowledge of this as he hasn't had access to the account after he closed it and hasn't been receiving statements or notices from the bank. We are now unable to successfully apply for a bank loan for our house as they won't lend to my boyfriend with his credit the way it is. Our options are to 1. Proceed with fraud investigations and charges in the family member allowing us to prove this is no fault of my boyfriend's and successfully secure the loan. 2. Boyfriend pays the debt and we wait at least two years from the payoff date for his credit to regain some loss. Option 2 sets us back at least three years in starting a family and our lives as homeowners. This will also not allow my boyfriend to secure a bank loan to start up his own business he's been dreaming of starting for a few years. This has devastated us and put a massive delay in our plans. My boyfriend doesn't like conflict and is going with option two. He isn't even planning on mentioning anything to the family member. He wants it all to go away and thinks his family member is going through a rough time. I want my boyfriend to proceed with fraud charges and investigation. We have worked too hard to not have our dream house and him owning his own business. So am I the asshole for pushing my opinion on my boyfriend? You said you're both working hard. Why can't you use your credit? If you're saying you guys both work hard, you have all this money, we're 27. You don't got the credit to get a house. I don't think you get it. You got it really choice. You don't get to push it. It's not your credit. He said no. Halas, done. Sucks. That's Oh, I know people get mad at me for this, but that's how I feel. Story time about the girl who used me to get with my guy best friend. So a little background information. I was 15 and in ninth grade. Well, at the end of summer, right before school started, this girl named Liv added me on Snapchat. And I had seen her all around school. She was very popular and a little bit stuck up. But I added her back and then I got a call on Snapchat from her. I answer very awkwardly and I'm like, hi. And then she was like, oh, I've seen you in a lot of this guy's pictures. Are you guys like best friends? And I'm like, yeah, sort of. And she goes, have you ever thought about dating him? It was just an extremely weird out of nowhere conversation. Anyway, so fast forward two weeks, I walk in the first day of school with my best friend, Tommy. And Tommy and I have like every single class together. For some reason, Liv thought that we were friends and she would come and go as she pleased. Like Tommy and I would be standing at my locker, she would come over. Anyways, fast forward to chemistry. She walks in the class, winks at Tommy, like for part two. Part two about the girl who used me to get with my guy best friend. So like I said, we were in chemistry. She walks in and she winks at Tommy. And I look over real quick and I realize that her nails were vermilion. That's Tommy's favorite color. And by the way, like I said before, I did not know this girl at all. We had never hung out. She never talked to me before this. Not to mention anytime that her and I talked, she would only talk about Tommy. 
Fast forward a couple days, we're in chemistry, and somehow she got her assigned seat next to me. And she was like, hey, do you want to study for the chemistry test together? And I was kind of excited because I thought that I had a new best friend. So I said, yeah, later on, she comes to my house. I never told her an address or anything like that. So I was very creeped out about how she knew my address. We studied for the test and she goes, hey, do you want to hang out with Tommy and a few other guys tomorrow? Well, tomorrow was the day that I was going out of town. So she goes, okay, maybe next week. After being out of town, I came back on a Saturday. And the next day I get a text from Tommy, like for part three. Part three about the girl who used me to get with my guy best friend. So like I said, she asked me if I wanted to hang out with Tommy and a few other guys. I told her that I was going out of town. When I got back from out of town, the next day I get a text from Tommy. He was flipping out on me. He said that I was talking shit about him to live. And apparently I said that I was happy that his mother died and a bunch of other bullshit. Well, after that, Tommy cut me off. So I was lonely and I started hanging out with Liv more, even though she said that terrible stuff to Tommy and made him cut me off. So fast forward a year, he is a new best friend, right? I get a DM from her on Instagram saying like, hey, did Tommy used to be your best friend? Pretty much everybody knew what happened between me and Tommy, but she was like, that girl that you're best friends with is dating him now. And then he completely cut me off. So technically she used both her and I to get with Tommy, but after dating for literally like two months, he cheated on her because she slept with five other guys. Story time about how my best friend waxed off my eyebrow in my sleep, so I cut her hair. So a little background information. I was 14 and in eighth grade, and my best friends and I were having a sleepover. And right before we had went to sleep, we were all talking about this one TikTok trend that was going around. It's like this trend where girls would go and put wax on their boyfriends while they were sleeping and then take it off. Well, I didn't think anything of it, so that night I went to sleep. I should have knew this was going to happen because I'm always the butt of the joke whenever it comes to our friend group. Like, I'm always the one getting picked on. Like, there was this one thing that my friend Ashley saw online. It was like, if you put white nail polish on your teeth, it would make your teeth whiter. So who did they decide to try it out on? Yup, me. And yes, I could have said no, but these were my best friends. I didn't think that they would intentionally hurt me. Anyway, so like I said, I go to sleep and all of a sudden I wake up in the middle of the night to something very, very, very hot on my face. I open my eyes and all of my friends are standing above me with their flashlights on. Like for part two. Part two about how my best friend waxed off my eyebrow while I was asleep, so I cut her hair. So like I said, went to sleep, didn't think anything was going to happen, and then I wake up and all of them are standing above me with their flashlights on. And then I realized that Ashley has a stick in her hand. Once I realized that there was wax on the other end of the stick, I started screaming. So then Kelsey decides to cover my mouth. She's like, shh, it's not that bad, I promise, like, don't worry. I get up real quick, I run to the bathroom, and there's like this pink transparent wax on my eyebrow. It was about 3 a.m. and we're all sitting there trying to find ways to get this wax off of my fucking eyebrow. Well, then Amber goes, I'm tired of this, grabs it and rips it off my forehead. So I'm crying at this point, like I'm in eighth grade, I'm about to have my glow up and y'all gotta ruin it with taking my eyebrow off. So nobody went to sleep for the rest of the night because they thought that I was gonna do something to them. So I acted all cool, I was like, no, it's fine, I can just draw it on when in reality I was going to cut this bitch's hair like for part, th part three about how my best friend waxed off my eyebrow in my sleep so I cut her hair so like I said nobody went to sleep for the rest of the night I acted like it was okay because I was plotting in my head that I was gonna cut one of their fucking ponytails off so I go over to their house next week and every single day that week they were telling me how good my drawn on eyebrow looked um it didn't actually look good and none of my hairs were growing back so around 12 o'clock, all of us are ready to go to bed. I'm laying down pretending that I'm sleeping and they think I'm sleeping. So they're over there talking shit about me on her bed, Ashley's bed. I wasn't sure which one's eyebrow I should rip off because the one ripped off my eyebrow, but then the other one put the wax on my eyebrow. They were like, she's sleeping. I don't think she's going to do anything. She doesn't even have the balls to do anything. So around four in the morning, everybody is dead asleep. I get up and Ashley had her hair in a ponytail. So that was easy enough. I grabbed a pair of scissors out of my book bag and I cut her hair off. Time about how I stole my best friend's boyfriend. So a little background information. I was 14 and in eighth grade. And we're going to call my best friend Ashley. Ashley was really nice at first. She always had my back when I needed her. But then out of nowhere, she started being super rude to me. She turned into one of those pick me girls that would always make fun of you in front of other guys, talk crap about you to the guy that you liked. Well, the one day I hear her talking shit about me whenever we were in class and everybody could hear her. She was literally on the whole other side of the class. And I asked her, hey, like, why were you talking about me? She was like, no, I was talking about a different girl. And I had a pretty unique name. So I was like, who else in the school could you have been talking about? But I just brushed it off. Well, then we were in algebra class and I heard her talking shit about me again. 
how I do my makeup so bad and I can never get a boyfriend. Like I'm so ugly and all that stuff. Well, she thought that I wasn't mad at her. So she came up to me the one day and was like, OMG, I have a boyfriend. Like for part two. Part two about how I stole my best friend's boyfriend. So like I said, she would talk shit about me all the time and I only confronted her that one time. So she thought that we were all good. So the one day before class starts, she runs up to me. She's like, oh my God, you'll never guess what? I have a boyfriend. She's like, he's so cute. He's really popular. He's on the football team. And I was like, girl, whatever, nobody cares. Until I'm sitting in my first class of the day and I remember that she made out with my boyfriend last year. I forgave her, of course. But because karma was taking a little bit too long, I figured I had to do something about it myself. So my plan was to hook up with her boyfriend. Do I feel bad about it? Absolutely not. So I went to my school's football game and guess who I saw? My best friend's boyfriend. She couldn't make it that night. She had something to do. So I had him all to myself. So I went up to him. I started flirting with him. And I was like, oh, you should break up with your girlfriend and date me instead. But then he was like, I thought you guys were best friends and I would never date you. Like for part Part three about how I stole my best friend's boyfriend. So like I said, I went to the football game. She wasn't there because she had something else to do. I went up to him. I started flirting. I told him that he should break up with her and date me instead. And I also said that she was a bitch and a whole bunch of other stuff. And he was like, why would you say that about your best friend? And he was like, I would never date you. And I had a feeling this would happen. So I had photoshopped a picture of her and this guy that she sits next to in her lab class. And I showed it to him and I was like, see, she's cheating on you. So he was pissed off. He gave me his number. And the next day he came over to my house. We cuddled, watched movies, we kissed. After three months, Ashley found out. We hadn't talked to each other since then, but now I am 16 in 10th grade and still with her ex-boyfriend. Funny thing though, the picture that I photoshopped with her and that guy, she's literally dating him now. So you're welcome, I guess. But anyway, she still goes around talking shit on me. I mean, who can blame her? I did steal- time about how I slept with my teacher and got pregnant. A little background information, I was 18 and in 12th grade. I had always had trouble in school, especially history class. And I had always had tutors and everything like that. And eventually I just got tired of trying to get my grade up because I realized that it was never going to happen. So my teacher was 27 years old. We're going to call him Mike and Mike had a girlfriend. He had been staying after school helping me like every single day from like three o'clock till five o'clock. Well, the one day I had this outfit on, that maybe wasn't that appropriate. And I was being super flirty with him the whole time. To be honest, I just didn't want to put in the effort to get up my grades. And then 10 minutes later, he started getting handsy. And I told him that if he wanted to do anything, he had to get my grade up for me. So he did just that. Well, for the next couple of months, I would go over to his house to study like for part part two about how i slept with my teacher and got pregnant so like i said i got tired of putting effort in to get my grade up so i let him hit and then i was going over his house after school well later on at the end of the year i find out that i'm pregnant and because i was 18 i really didn't have to care about what my parents thought so i told him and surprisingly this man was on board with it he was like oh my god like let's do this i'm so happy and i was like what the fuck well, his ex-girlfriend found out, so she went and told the school he got fired. And three years later, we're still together raising our child. Story time, my boyfriend cheated on me, so I cheated on him with his cousin. So a little background information, I was 18 and a freshman in college. So my boyfriend and I have been dating for three years going on four. And we were pretty much what you call a very toxic relationship. We would break up with each other, then get back together five minutes later. I would say that it's all really my boyfriend's fault. Because instead of spending time with me, he would rather go out to the club and sleep with any whore that he could find. But he would always start an argument with me before he went to the club so that way he had a reason to cheat on me. And he's been doing this ever since we first started dating. I don't know why I didn't take that as a red flag, but I'm a dumb bitch who lacks common sense and is completely blind to red flags. So I started a private Snapchat 
but I used it as almost like an OnlyFans. Except it was free. I added a bunch of guys on there and my boyfriend's cousins. His one cousin was my best friend and would low-key hype me up. Like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend cheated on me, so I cheated on him with his cousin. So like I said, I made this private Snapchat that was basically like an OnlyFans. And I had his cousin on there who was low-key my best friend. And he would low-key always hype me up on my thirst traps. So eventually I sent him a whole nude picture of myself. His cousin had a girlfriend, but neither of us were going to tell our significant others. And I told his cousin that I would sleep with him if he cheats on me again. Well, what do you know? A few nights later, he calls me starting an argument before he goes to the club. So I go to bed. I'm bawling my eyes out. And he calls me at three in the morning asking for me to get an Uber for him and some friends. But I hear a girl talking in the back. So obviously I gave him a hard time about it. So he hangs up on me, calls me 20 minutes later, and I hear this girl talking in Spanish in the background. Me being me, I assume the worst. I assume that he cheated on me. So he calls me the next day saying that we need to talk. I go over there. He says he doesn't want to be with me anymore. Life for part three. boyfriend cheated on me so I cheated on him with his cousin so like I said he calls me over to his house he says that I'm the problem in the relationship I'm the reason why he cheats on me 24 7 so I'm like you know what whatever I leave and I go to his cousin's house and his cousin kind of does the deed on me after that I leave because I really wasn't trying to do the nasty so a few weeks later my boyfriend texts me saying I need to talk to you da 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 and we're not together at this point mind you and he's like, hey, like, I just feel like you're really not being honest with me. Like, I want to get back together, but I feel like you're unfaithful. And I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? You literally cheat on me 24-7. So I give him my phone to go through it. I thought I deleted everything, but I didn't delete a conversation between my best friend and I. So I'm bawling my eyes out, turn on my game face for lying. And I'm like, I swear to God, like, I didn't cheat on you. It was a prank. But he did the nasty with that girl, so I think we're even. So obviously I got back with him and we've been together for four years. Story time about how somebody stole my $12,000 dog at a house party. So a little background information, I was 17 and a junior in high school, and I decided to throw a party at my house before winter break. So usually whenever I threw parties, I would always have everybody in the basement because I had a pretty big basement. There was a sliding glass door to the outside, so nobody had to go upstairs to get in or get out. And I would always lock the door to the upstairs just in case anybody decided to wander up the stairs. And because I didn't think anybody would get in upstairs, I let my dogs run around the house. So everybody who I invited showed up and I guess that my address got leaked because a bunch of random people started showing up at my house. And it's not like I didn't have neighbors. No, I lived in a very tight cul-de-sac. So people were parking in front of my neighbor's driveways, in my neighbor's driveways. So I called my parents and eventually I had to have my neighbors call the cops on my house party. My own party. Like for part two. Part two about how somebody stole my $12,000 dog at my house party. So like I said, I had to call my parents and they got the cops called on the house so that way I could get everybody that I did not know out of the freaking house. Thankfully, my friends and I hadn't started drinking yet because literally five minutes after my friends showed up, random people started showing up in big groups. So after everybody clears out, I go to walk upstairs and I have my keys in my hand ready to unlock the door. The door was literally busted open. Like somebody had to have kicked the doorknob because the frame was cracked, the door was cracked, it was bad. So I'm freaking out. I wasn't even thinking about my dog at the time until my friend Kirsten asked to see my new puppy because Kirsten had just got home from college and she had only ever seen the dog over FaceTime. So we're searching all over the house and we cannot find my fucking dog. Well, when my parents got home that night, they pretty much grounded me for life. But then I want to say a month later, my friend Jake, who was there that night, called me freaking the fuck out. Like for part three. Part three about how my $12,000 dog got stolen at my house party. So like I said, we couldn't find Mimi. Um, my parents pretty much grounded me for life. I get a call from my friend Jake, who was there that night of the night of the party. And he's like flipping out. He's like, I think I know who took Mimi, aka my dog. 
So I'm like freaking out. I go into the kitchen, I put him on speakerphone so that way my parents can hear. And he was like, well, my girlfriend Avery has this one girl who was at the party that night on Snapchat. And I was like, okay, and what the fuck about it? And he was like, well, the one night we were laying in bed together and she was going through people's Snapchat stories and then she got onto this girl's private story. And I told her, that's my friend's dog, the one that got stolen. So then we looked her up on Instagram, we went on her Visco, and she has a crap ton of pictures of your dog on her Visco. So somehow his girlfriend Avery finds this girl's address. My parents were like, oh, we want to call the police. Somehow I talked them out of doing that. Long story short, I went to her house, I got my dog back after telling her parents about it. But when I was leaving, I ran over her. Story time about how my mom got with my sister's boyfriend. So a little background information, I was 13 and in 8th grade. And my sister was a senior in high school and she was 17. And my sister always had a new boyfriend. Like after three months of dating somebody, they would break up and then she would be with a new guy a month later. And this started whenever she was a sophomore. So yeah, she had a lot of boyfriends. Anyway, so she had started dating this boy and we're gonna call him Ben. Well, lucky for Ben, whenever they started dating was right around the time when we were supposed to go on our vacation that we take every year. So my mom and dad said that he could come with us. So my sister, who we're gonna call Emily, she decided to bring Ben and I decided to bring one of my friends, Carly. We drove down, everything was good for the first two days. And usually what would happen on this vacation is my dad would end up staying at the hotel and doing work while we were all out doing stuff. So my mom, Ben, and Emily were all out drinking at the bar 24 7 like for part two my mom got with my sister's boyfriend. So like I said, Emily, Ben, and my mom were out drinking 24 seven at the bar. And since this was a vacation that we took every year, my sister already knew a bunch of people down there. The one night my mom started feeling really sick at the bar. So Ben offered to take her back to the hotel. And at this time, my friend, my dad, and I were all down at the buffet in the hotel. So Ben took my mom upstairs to our hotel room. And my dad was like, oh, do you guys wanna walk down to the fair? We said yes, so he told us to go upstairs and get his wallet. So my friend and I go up in the elevator to our room. And I want to say this was about 20 or 30 minutes after Ben and my mom had went upstairs. So we get into the room, we hear the shower running, which was weird because we didn't think anybody was there. So instead of me calling my dad because it might have been a murderer, I go and the door is slightly creaked open. So I look through the door and obviously I could hear you know what, but hers and his clothes were on the floor. Like for part three. Part three about how my mom got with my sister's boyfriend. So like I said, obviously we could hear stuff. We saw their clothes on the floor. So I took a video and I took a picture, but obviously you couldn't see anything. And I didn't want to tell my dad first. So my best friend and I, we went downstairs, we went to the carnival. And when my sister got back, she ended up getting back with Ben because obviously after he was done, he went back to my sister. I know this is confusing, but try to keep up. So I asked my sister if she can pretty please take me and my friend down to the pool to go swimming. So my sister came down with us and then I was like, I have to tell you something. So then I ended up showing her the photos and the videos. And at this point, she's like, what the fuck? So surprisingly, without choking this man to death, she goes upstairs, she goes to sleep. And then the next morning, she goes and has a talk with my mom. So my mom, my sister, my friend and I, we all sat down at the buffet in the morning and had breakfast. And my dad and Ben weren't there. Well, long story short, my mom ended up saying, it's not fair that you bring all these young guys around me. Da -da 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 -da. Are you really going to break up our family because of this? And till this day, my dad still does not know about it. Story time about the time that I had a thing with my stepbrother. So a little background information. I was 14 and it was the first half of my freshman year. So my dad had recently broken up with my mom and he had different girls in and out of the house 24 seven. I mean, he was kind of doing his thing after a 15 year marriage. Well, the one day I'm sitting in the house and he brings this girl Kayla over. She had a few kids herself, but both of them said that they would never date. Well, I thought her son Tyler was extremely good looking. So him and I started talking over Snapchat and things were going good for quite a while. Well, I would say a few months later, my dad told us that Kayla was coming over with her kids. And I was super confused because he seemed really nervous about it. So her kids and I were all sitting on the sofa and they sat us down and they were like, we need to talk to you guys. We're gonna call my dad Mike. 
She goes, Mike and I are dating now, so we all have to get along. The reason why she said that was because she thought that I didn't get along. Part two about how I had a thing with my stepbrother. So like I said, my dad and her sat us down and she goes, Mike and I are dating now, da 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 da. And she was like, so we all have to get along now because she thought that I didn't get along with some of her kids and her kids did not respect my dad at all. So like I said, Tyler and I were dating at this point and I freaked out. I was like, you guys can't start dating because Tyler and I are dating. And Kayla was like, well, that's too bad. You two need to break up because I'm your new mother now. And I'm sitting there like, what the fuck did this bitch say? So I start screaming that it's not fair. Tyler's trying to calm me down. My dad is trying to calm Kayla down. To be honest, my dad didn't really care because I had told him about Tyler and I before the whole situation. I thought Tyler would be really upset at the situation, but he was actually pissed off at his mom. So we broke up. Kayla and my dad dated for a little bit over two months. Well, surprise, surprise, Kayla cheated on my dad with her ex. So Tyler and I started dating again. <laughs> time on when I caught my stepdad abusing my mom. So a little background information, men are trash, and I was 13 and in seventh grade. Well, it was my birthday and my mom took me to the shoe store to get some new shoes, and I saw this guy keep staring at my mother. So I pulled my mom aside and whispered to her like, hey, there's some dude staring at us, because low-key he looked creepy as hell. Well, apparently he wasn't creepy. He came up to my mom and started talking to her and he was flirting with my mom a lot. So I grabbed a random pair of shoes and told her I was ready to go. Her and I walk up to the register. I think the conversation is over with her and James, but then he's like, oh, like, let me pay for that. Next thing you know, they exchange numbers and I start seeing him a lot more. And my mom seemed very happy. Like she was smiling 24 seven. So fast forward, we all move in together and I got a job. Well, my best friend Kayla was 17 and she had her driver's license. Like for part two. Part two about when I caught my stepdad abusing my mother. So like I said, we all moved in together. My mother was super happy and I had a job. My best friend would come and pick me up after this job and I would usually get off work around 7 p.m. Well, around this time, James would have already been at work. He usually started work at like six o'clock, but every time that I would come home, my mother would be crying in her bedroom. So I ended up telling my best friend about it and she said that she would come and get me early the next day from work so that way we could possibly see what was happening while I wasn't there. So fast forward the next day, Kayla come and gets me early from work. She pulls around the corner and we walk to my house because they would have seen her car if we parked on the street. I quietly unlock the door. My best friend and I go upstairs. We hear my mom screaming in pain and the bedroom door was wide open. He was hitting my mother. So I kind of whispered to my best friend to take a video while I called the cops. He ended up going to jail, got a restraining order, and now my mom and I are living in a new house. Am I in the wrong for blowing up at my husband for lying to me about kicking my sister out? My sister is 20 and has just got out of a terrible relationship with her partner and has a five-month-old son. She's dealing with lots of issues including depression and it was actually my husband's idea for her to come and move in with us. After about two weeks, my husband was complaining about the baby crying and about my sister just being there in general, even though she helps around the house. We had an argument about it but he told me to just forget it and that he was being insensitive. Not long after, I had to leave town for a couple of days without my husband husband and I returned and my sister's no longer there. My husband told me that my sister's gone to live with a friend instead and gave me a letter that was supposedly from her. The letter seemed a bit off so I called her straight away. She told me that my husband kicked her out and told her that she's no longer welcome and should take responsibility. She explained that she is actually staying at a shelter and literally has no money. Go to part two. Okay this is part two. So I waited for my husband to get home and literally blew up at him. He admitted that he faked the letter but said I'm unfair for taking her side. I told him that I'm going to pick her up because I don't want her to be homeless at a shelter with my five-month-old nephew. He told me that he'd changed the locks and that I'm not allowed to bring her home. He said that I'm letting her affect our lives, but she's my sister and I don't know what to do. I get that it is also his house, but I don't know why he's so against her staying with us. Am I in the wrong? 